Joining us now for TD's Your Story, Your Future is Pamela Meredith, TD's Senior Art Curator. Welcome, Pamela. Thank you so much for having me. What a great job. It is a great job. Oh. Mm-hmm. I came from the museum world um, to the corporate world, and uh, it's turned out to be an amazing opportunity, a great gig, uh, so to speak. Yeah, why did TD start collecting art in the first place? Okay, um, so the collection is coming up on its 50th birthday. Um, so TD was um, one of the first in Canada to start a corporate collection. Um, the CEO at the time in the 60s, Alan Lambert, he was looking at New York where um, corporate art collections um, had started, you know, mm-hmm. banks like Chase Manhattan um, had art collections. And so at that time, TD was building TD Center, um, the collection of amazing modern black buildings mm-hmm. um, in the downtown core. And so TD had engaged uh, a sort of preeminent uh, European architect named Mies van der Rohe, who... Uh, the Bauhaus. Yes, who said... Um, I'm building great spaces in these buildings for art. And he said, I suggest you collect Picasso, Miro, the great European Mm -hmm. painters at the time. And and Alan Lambert, um, the CEO, said, I take your point. We will collect great art, but it will be Canadian. Um, So that set the course um, 50 years ago for uh, TD's collection, um, which has remained Canadian um, ever since. Canadian, contemporary, museum-worthy. Um, those are the things that we're looking for. So what do you look for other than it being Canadian in, in a specific work of art? Okay. Um, well, the early purchases um, in the 60s were great abstract paintings by um, the important artists of the day, um, Rhea Pell, Bourgeois, Patterson Ewan, um, great painters that mm-hmm. you can see at the National Gallery or the AGO. And, um, but he was, the, the consultant that they had at the time was buying these artists' work when they were in their late 20s, mm-hmm. um, early 30s. So we try to do that today. Um, we're looking at emerging to mid-career artists, so artists that have, you know, some museum shows under their belt. They probably have uh, a good gallery that represents them, um, but they haven't maybe yet um, hit, you know, peak uh, um, peak and- prices. We, we try to, you know, take a few risks and um, acquire things, you know, as the artist is on their way up. So do you travel all over the country? We do. So we collect coast to coast. Um, and, for example, if, I, if I'm working on an office in Victoria, B.C., I like to look at artists that have a connection to Victoria, um, maybe live there or went to school there, or maybe they teach there now, um, just, you know, to make it relevant to the people that um, work there and um, clients of the bank. So, yes, coast to coast, and um, we do have a real focus on artwork from the north, um, from Canada's Arctic Mm-hmm. Um, so we also, around that 67 moment, which was Canada's centennial, um, the bank TD did a centennial project, which was to bring together um, a group of Inuit artwork, mostly carvings. Um, and so TD assembled about a thousand works of art. Wow. Um, that was our gift uh, to the city and to the country and um, now lives permanently in a public gallery in, in TD South, um, which is at 77 Wellington. So we encourage everybody to come and visit because it really is um, an exquisite, very important um, collection of Inuit artwork. Yeah, it sounds fabulous. But who decides what you're going to pass on, either sell, trade, donate? Whose responsibility is that? Well, ultimately, it's mine, um, <laughs> which is great. Um, I... I work with a couple of um, great curators, and so we're always looking. Um, we're lucky because we get to see things often, you know, fresh out of the studio. Um, so we see things first. We can act relatively quickly if we know we have a great place for it. Um, and uh, so, so we, we can move quickly. So while, while, while we have um, such an important art curator on the phone, mm. what, what would you suggest for somebody you know, 
like us that, mm-hmm. that might want to invest in, in, in a piece of art, other than finding something we love. Right, which is the most important thing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when I'm, when I'm thinking about something f- for my home, um, personally, I, it, the investment piece is um, sort of at the very back of my mind. It, it, most importantly is, do I love it? Um, does it challenge me? Um, does it um, offer something new to say on the subject, whether it's landscape or abstraction or portraiture? Is it offering a fresh perspective? Am I going to love it next year, in five years, or will it become sort of background noise? Will it continue to ask me um, n- new questions uh, on the subject and keep me engaged Hopefully forever. Um, so that's what I that's what I look for um, at home, and so that's what I look for for TD as well. But the investment piece um, is a little closer to the top of mind um, mm-hmm. because it is an investment um, for the bank and an alternative asset. And so I I look at things and think, is this the best piece by this artist that we can afford? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the most sort of signature example of what they're doing. Um, oftentimes we collect an artist in some depth, so mm-hmm. not just having one piece, maybe, you know, trying to acquire something from every stage of their career when they, you know, sort of change, we, we, uh, we go with them. Um, uh, but is it the most um, representative thing that we can acquire from that, that artist? Well, uh, this is a, a question that pr- you could probably talk f- for 10 mm-hmm. hours about, but mm-hmm. we just want a quick answer. How do you know if something or have a feeling that something is a good investment? Right. Um, f- well, for me, it, it is a feeling. Um, I sort of run through my checklist. Um, I look at where the artist went to school, their, um, their peers, the gallery that they show at, the different museums perhaps that have collected them, other corporate collections. And so I, I run through my checklist, and then ultimately I kind of throw it out and and just go with my gut. Um, oh, I, I bet I, some people would <laughs> love your gut <laughs> when they're buying art. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> so, so is this something you plan to continue doing for a long time? I think hope so. Um, I think so, yes. Um, <laughs> as I was saying, it, it is, um, it's the only thing I know. It's my, it's my passion. It's my hobby. It's my, uh, it's my job as well. So I'm really lucky because um, I love what I do. Um, Pamela, tell us how people can, can, they can come in, what, what hours can they come in and see the, this collection? So the Inuit collection um, is in the lobby. It's sort of tucked away in the lobby of 77 Wellington. Mm-hmm. Um, there is some signage, but it's very discreet. Um, so definitely look for it. Um, and whenever the building is open, the gallery is open. So I think it's sort of 8 to 7 in the evening. Um, and another thing I would suggest is checking out, we have a, a brand new shiny website um, mm-hmm. that has some examples from the collection, has information about the gallery, information about um, the arts events around town that we're sponsoring. Um, and so that's www.art.td.com. Oh, well, thank you so much mm-hmm. for joining us today. That's Pamela Meredith, TD Senior Art Curator. Thank and you. that was TD's Your Story, Your Future. Okay, now what we want to tell you about before we go to break is you definitely want to go to whatshesaidtalk.com because we have a contest on and it's a doozy. You can win two VIP platinum tickets to the uniquely Niagara wine and culinary event in beautiful Niagara on the Lake. That's novel. It's on October 29th. A plus one night accommodation at the Best Western St. Catharines Hotel and Conference Center. And that includes a buffet breakfast for two because we don't want to send you off hungry. hungry. So um, the platinum tickets for the wine event include your gourmet food appetizers and the wine tastings. Uh, There's 
there's a seminar, plus there's two additional uh, seminars, one on stemware enhancement um, hosted by Michael Pincus. He's, you know, the grape guy that's also served with special wines and paired with specialty cheeses. Uh, you'll get a takeaway bag with all kinds of educational wine and culinary information, wine tasting vouchers, and two free wine glasses. Um, so that is, you know, it's, it's around uh, $375, $400 altogether. And also, we are offering all of our listeners a $25 discount for attending the Uniquely Niagara Wine and Culinary event. Again, it's on Saturday, October 29th um, at 11.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. So you can visit our website for more information and for your chance to win. And don't forget, the Rent Frock Repeat 15% discount is on until the end of November. You just use the promo code the Jewel when ordering your next show-stopping holiday number online. Uh, that is all our contests. So when we come back, Jordy Jackson, a talented singer-songwriter from Jones Falls, Ontario. This is what she said on the Jewel. Stay with us. She might just 